Hi, this is Jennifer Gonzalez for Cult of Pedagogy. This is part three of a three-part series on Digo, a robust tool for online bookmarking. In part one, we looked at how to use Digo alone to keep your own research organized. In part two, we learned how to use Digo groups to collaborate with others. Now, if you happen to be a K-12 through or higher ed teacher and the people you want to collaborate with are your students, then Digo has some extra features just for you. When you first sign up for Digo, you have the option to apply for an educator account. If you already have a regular Digo account, you can find information on how to apply by going to the bottom of any page and clicking on Pricing and Plans. Click right here. If you choose this plan, follow the prompts, and you should receive your acceptance within about 48 hours. Note that you'll only qualify for a plan if you have an email account affiliated with a school or college. Once you have the educator upgrade, you'll be given what's called a teacher console. Within this console, you can build a list of students, then create and manage groups with those student accounts. You can see here that I've already added a batch of students, and as the teacher, I have their usernames and passwords, which I can print out for students like this. I just click on Print Members. It gives me a list for my own use of, of their usernames and passwords, and then sheets that I can clip that give the student their username and password that they can keep um, in a safe place. To add new students I have a couple of options. One is to add a student to an existing group. I do this by clicking Add Members, then choosing one of these options. Let's look at the first one, Create Student Accounts and Add Them to the Group. Creating your own student accounts is the best option if you're working with K-12 students who don't all have their own email addresses, or if you'd like their accounts to have some consistency. What's nice about the student accounts is that Digo has extra privacy settings in place for them. Students cannot be contacted by anyone outside the class environment, and their activity can't be indexed by public search engines. Note right here that Digo recommends that for higher ed, students should simply open their own Digo accounts. This will allow them to continue working with Digo even after your course has ended. To create accounts, I'll just enter student names in this box. I'm going to follow their example by just using a name plus an initial, except I'm going to use last name and first initial. So I will just put uh, You can also upload a CSV file of student names right down here. Digo provides a sample file to help you get that right. After you've entered the names, click Create. You're given the option to disable personal profiles for students. This is required to maintain privacy for students under age 13, but it's still an option for older students. Another way to add new students would be to add existing accounts to the group. This would be handy when you're creating new groupings of students, such as a special study group. All you do is go through your list of current students, you choose a couple of them that you want in the group, and add them. You can also invite students by email. This is how you would pull higher ed students into groups. Right here, you just type in their email addresses and click Invite. Finally, you can create a new group and add members at that time. When you're first starting out, this may be the way you want to proceed. For any class groups, it's probably a good idea to set them to private so that only group members can view the activity. Once that class has been created, you can then add new members. Notice that I've got two groups here that are named after class periods. This is a sensible way of organizing your students, but I do have a caution for you. Remember that a group is ultimately a big collection of everything that group posts. So if you're planning on discussing a lot of different topics over the year, it can become hard to follow. This can be managed by making sure students appropriately tag their items, which will allow you to look at items by tag. So you'll see down here, um, I've got, for example, writing prompts. Click on just that, and only writing prompts will come up in the view. Once you get your group set up the way you like, you're off and running, ready to do all the in-depth online collaboration that Digo offers. Read our review on Cult of Pedagogy to find ideas on how to apply this tool in your class. And if you haven't yet, take a look at the first two videos in this series to get a more complete picture of how Digo works. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.